Spoilers! There's gonna be no spoilers for Gen 9 in this video. You're welcome. Man, is it just me or does Game Freak just not know how to keep their mouth shut? Not in like a- Oh my god, Game Freak, shut the fuck up. More like that one friend who says- I got a huge secret, but I can't tell you guys. Okay, fine if you insist. Now sure, it's not just Pokemon games that get leaked, that goes for a ton of games. But Pokemon is just on a whole other level, like more often times than not, a good 80% of the game can be spoiled. And with Gen 9 on the horizon that has enjoyed a pretty leakless countdown, for now, I think it's a good time to look back to see how much of these games were leaked before release and why exactly Game Freak is so bad at hiding their own games. So this is the Glass Apple, and this is a complete history of Pokemon leaks or what I like to call it, why Game Freak cannot keep a secret. Yeah, no. Let's quickly get this out of the way first since there was like no leaks back then and even if there were, where would you find them? Like for Gen 1 and 2, just imagine booting up one of these bad boys just to see. What a time to be alive! And Gen 3 was a bit more modern, but I wasn't even born at that time, so do I even consider it modern? But I didn't find anything online about it, so I'm gonna just assume that these games were kept under locked. And that's pretty much it. It's odd to think about, but Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and Fire, Red, and Leaf Green, I guess, were the last Pokemon games to come out that never had anything leaked beforehand, which was like 20 years ago, but it's still something. So I was going to include Gen 4 in this section as well, but but to my surprise, it was there that Pokemon League started to go rampant across the internet. And it all came from a certain source. Everyone, let me introduce you to Koro Koro. Koro Koro was and still is the primary source for news on the Pokemon games, anime, manga, and just anything Pokemon related, honestly. It began back in 1977 and is a Japanese magazine that's targeted towards young boys, which I'm obviously part of that demographic, and features other Japanese media like Dorymon, Beyblade, and just a bunch of other shonen and video game stuff. And it also translates to facts. So back in the ancient years of 2006, the leaks can be found in this magazine, showcasing the starters, brand new evolutions, two old Pokemon like Electivire and Roserade, and some characters that'll be in the new game. I guess I should mention that Koro Koro isn't doing this illegally, I can't imagine what would happen if they were, since they were partnered up with Game Freak to advertise it. But I still consider them as leaks, since all of this wasn't revealed by them in a trailer or a news update, and was revealed by an outside source. And if you disagree with me, you're probably right. Back then, it was hard to come by, but these scans can be found on videogamesblogger.com and are actually translated and have comments. Like how Chimchar is a fire and normal type, of course, and these comments that are saying, these are outdated, Kalos is coming out. I know man, I can't wait for those games. And, vote up for Turtwig, no don't he sucks balls. Other than Coral Coral, Game Freak was doing a pretty good job at hiding what the big stuff the games had to offer, uh, but yeah, that wouldn't last for too long. It was the year 2010, a lot cooler than 2009, but not as cool as 2011. Everything seemed to be pretty smooth sailing until that leak happened. You know exactly which one I'm talking about, the one that leaked the evolutions of the Unovan starters, but... It wasn't like in-game or anything, it was like a blurry render. Now this is one of my favorite leaks to ever happen, just because of how absurd the whole situation is. Like I'm 99% sure that these were leaked on 4chan, which we all know is the greatest source for official things. And excluding the fact that these were actually right, I can see why people thought these were fake, and to an extent, a really big joke. Like, come on, Snivy doesn't have any arms or legs, which isn't really fun, uh, probably. How did Oshawott turn into a quadruped with a horn, and Tepig, <laughs> you're telling me a pig becomes bipedal and we have our third firefighting type in a row? Yeah, right. What's next? A Pokemon based off literal garbage? Like, if we had some in-game footage or sprites, then it could be a whole lot more believable. But no, it was just a bunch of art on a piece of paper. Like, anyone could do that. Hell, I could do that. Look at that. It's a leak right there. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know, but we'll see. And adding on to that debunk list, people thought that these starters were ripping off past designs. Like Milotic and Superior, which, yeah, okay, two long snakes, I can understand. Samurott looked like like Dialga, apparently. It's a reach, but sure. And then we have 
okay, that's a bit too much. And with what seems to be piles of evidence leading to this leak being fake, of, of course it wasn't. And as we all know, we got that bipedal pig. That was our third fired fighting type in a row. Thanks, Game Freak, for not being original. Looking back at it, this shit is hilarious. Like, come on, I've seen fake leaks done much better and more official than this. And the fact that one of the biggest secrets of the game was leaked on 4chan on fucking graph paper is actually quite the accomplishment. Good shit, Game Freak. It was so unoriginal and fake that it turned out to be real. You know what, guys? Let's clap for them. Clap for Game Freak real quick. I believe the consensus with X and Y and Oras was that Coral Coral were the big leakers leading up to their release. Like it was prevalent in the past two, but this time around when Coral Coral dropped every month, it felt like a celebration. Poketubers were talking about it, and fans were actively excited and counting down the days till they leak. It was some fun times. For me, the mechas were always my most anticipated thing to come out of these leaks, uh, for reasons I'll get into later, but in my opinion, I do think Coral Coral went very overboard. Like, sure, this is all probably Game Freak relaying all this info to them, but damn, there was like no surprises when the game came out because everything was already revealed already. At this point, it wasn't even just new Pokemon or Megas, but full on story developments and locations, which kind of just rounds off a lot of the cool things that should have been a surprise, but just wasn't. Gen 6 had the biggest hype for Coral Coral, mostly because they showed off every little feature the game had to offer, but it was fun watching a bunch of Pokemon fans getting excited for a children's magazine. And I was one of them, they showed off Mega Slowbro, how can you not? So my favorite thing Koro Koro has ever done for the franchise was being the first source to show off the box art for Sun and Moon, but they're completely blurred. Not even blurred, someone just grabbed a flashlight and cranked it up to the max. So secretive. There was no silhouette of the legendaries or hints, so it was just there. But it didn't stop me. Did this game on the 3DS? After the first official trailer came out, Game Freak did a somewhat good job at hiding- Yeah, never mind, the game got leaked like next week. Which leak would that be, you might ask? Well, this time it was the Chinese leak. You can probably guess why it's named that. With a whole bunch of info on the new Pokemon, new features of the game, but most importantly, we got what looks to be the concept art of the final evolutions of the starters. Now fool me once, shame on you. Or is it me? Shit, I messed that up, didn't I? But these looked way different from how the Gen 5 starters were leaked. Like, this was actually just concept art and looked much less official, in hindsight, to the other starters. Not to mention how this same leak was very right in some cases, but also very wrong. Like how they said that gyms were removed, which is right, but they also said that there would be a dolphin Pokemon in this game, which uh, did not happen. And for the starters themselves, they looked kinda convincing, I guess. Like, Decidueye looks pretty real. But then I see Incineroar, and I'm just like, yeah, this is definitely a troll. It's so obvious at this point because, come on, we have all these memes about these firefighting starters, it's not like they're gonna give us another one. And also, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, look how Litten looks right now. How does that become a jacked wrestler that also has a face of a furry? This leak was around for a while because it was so right and so wrong at the exact same time until... Game Freak just screwed themselves over. Look, I don't run a multi-billionaire company that has the highest grossing franchise of all time. I'm just a guy who barely knows how to use chopsticks still. But when you make a demo, don't leave files of every single new Pokemon in the game you know, the most important part of your series. But yeah, the Chinese leaks were real and defied. S some odds, n not all of them. And everyone was really mad because we got what looks to be our next fire and fighting type, but I didn't really care because I was choosing Rowlet. I feel like here, more than ever, fake leaks were flooding the community. Fake leaks have always been there with the star of a new gen, but since it was our first mainline game on a home console, the anticipation was at a breaking point. It was the usual fake starter reveals, fake Koro Koro skins, legendaries, concept arts, and stuff that more often times than not look way more real than what we actually get. Why do I mention this? Mostly because I want to remind everyone that we still haven't got a platypus Pokemon. Which brings us to Sword and Shield, which had a Pretty interesting leaking period. Interesting as in Koro Koro was non-existent and everyone cared about trees instead. There were a couple leaks here and there, but again, every Pokemon fan was too busy hating on the series. It wasn't until November where the game got data mined again, and also people got early copies of the game and leaking anything and everything. Which is a 
huge shame too because it wasn't like everything was leaked over time but Game Freak thought November 1st was November 18th which is fair it happens to me all the time I thought New Year's was today the Gen 4 remix also happened and nothing really came out of it which makes sense since the very first trailer it kind of seemed like an exact one-to-one -one remake of the game and therefore there wasn't much to actually leak I'm pretty sure the whole game was leaked a couple days before well, who cares about that the real star of the show was Legends Arceus before the game was actually announced there were some screenshots floating around of what seems to be an open world Pokemon game but they were too blurry to really make out anything personally I didn't really buy it because it reminded me too much of those wow this will be Pokemon in 20 years type of thing uh, but look at that they ended up actually being real honestly it was the same song and dance like it has been for the past two generations we were mostly doing good then somehow some way for the third time in a row <gasps> The new Hussein forms were leaked a couple days before release. And someone got the whole game and posted it on Twitter. Some of these are just early testers showing off their experience with the game, but damn, it happens way too often. Now you could say if you don't want to see these leaks, just stay off the internet, but to be fair, that's really hard. First world problems. This section isn't gonna be super long since the game isn't out yet, and we've been doing pretty good uh, for now. Yeah, never mind. I finished recording this video and the game got leaked again. Good good job, guys. I, I don't even finish this video yet, but you guys still got caught. Didn't expect anything less, honestly. But from what I do know, apparently the guy that has all the inside information is leaking in riddles. Now, I can't say I know too much about these riddles since I'm trying to go into these games as blind as I can, but... Let's see if that continues because leaks, they they keep finding you even though you don't want to see them, but they're so tempting at the same time and the cycle keeps continuing and it's so annoying! With every new generation, it kind of seems like every game gets more and more leaked. I mean, Diamond and Pearl only had simple Coral Coral leaks and compare that to now where we have early testers, hackers, data miners, and people just getting the game earlier than they're supposed to. And again, this isn't just a problem with Pokemon and they really shouldn't be blamed for it. Uh, minus the early copy stuff and the demo stuff. Okay, actually no, they're pretty awful. But all this just leads me to the conclusion that when something leaks from Pokemon, it's a bigger deal. When you have a multiplayer series that allows you to choose different characters, we obviously want to know what those characters are. Take for example Smash, where leaks for those games can have fans just as, if not more, hungry for them. Since Smash is such a big and old series, and we as fans want to know what new and old characters we could play as in the next installment. Now take Pokemon, a series that is a bit older than Smash, and a series where you pick and choose characters to play as, but instead of 85 to choose from, there's over 900. But I feel like these leaks are a bigger deal more than ever with Gen 9. Because if you haven't noticed already, no one brings up Coral Coral like they used to. It's still around, but the thing is, they've stopped announcing new information ahead of trailers coming out. So basically, there's no point in checking up on them for info we already know. And adding on top of that, Mega's helped us get hyped even more. Pokemon is a series that relies on nostalgia time to time. Actually, a lot of the time. And Megas were a great way to bring some fan favorites back and give them more love, so seeing which Pokemon got lucky would make any fan excited. Oh, but they removed them in Sun and Moon. Okay, cool, here's a cooler feature than Megas. I don't know if it's just me, but when something is leaked from an upcoming Pokemon game, it just matters so much more than any other series. And now, even more than ever, with how popular a series has become over time. Okay, that might be a reach. People probably care about Smash leaks more. Either way, just try to avoid leaks as much as possible because in the end, they can ruin the experience for you and for- Oh my god, guys, new form of Charizard confirmed! <laughs>